Hello everyone, this is Erin, so welcome back, or hello for the first time, if I haven't seen you. Um, so this is Lit Cocktail, and today, guess what? We're going to be doing a sci-fi roundup. Lots of fun sci-fi books. Yeah. So I read a bunch of sci-fi books at a different times, and instead of doing reviews on each one, uh, I decided to put them all into one video. I took three books I've read over the last year or so and they have varying degrees of sci-fi-ness and by sci-fi-ness there is a very approachable sci-fi and there's also a very like people that are like heavy hard sci-fi that only read sci-fi and they know the ins and outs and there's a lot of people that feel like sci-fi all has to be related to each other in some way I'm not one of those people. I enjoy a lot of sci-fi. There are some that I sort of pick and choose what my favorites are. Um, just as a precursor, um, there will be some mild spoilers. I will try not to reveal the most spoilers in them, but just to be forewarned, if I stumble upon a spoiler of one of these books, um, sorry. <laughs> so probably a good chance to um, read them and then join me or just be forewarned that you might get something spoiled for you if you watch the rest of this video. Okay, so the first one, I'm going to do them in order of which I read them and also happens to be the order of which they were published. So the first book that I read was Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This has gotten a lot of attention over the last uh, year or so um, about sort of young adult and sci-fi and dystopian and uh, people really like this book. I really love this book too. Um, it's very nostalgia heavy for those that sort of grew up in the 80s and 90s and have a lot of this sort of like old school games and movies and who watched a lot of like it's basically just like a lot of 80s references so any people that um, sort of grew up and have um, an affinity of those types of things. Um, you sort of did to just see the 80s through this re-emergence, which is interesting because we're I think we're seeing a lot of the same things today, like right now. Um, a lot of people sort of going back to like the first video games and those classic movies and all the sort of like 80s nostalgia. So it centers around um, a young teen and um, he is on this sort of like virtual um, reality hunt. So it's basically like The Sims in the 80s <laughs> and then um, a dystopian reality. So people sort of like go into this alternate reality um, because their actual lives are pretty terrible. Uh, and there's a lot of action adventure, um, a little bit of like first romance, first love. So I thought this was really approachable. Um, the science here is really less science and more near future kind of fiction. Um, I think it sort of has to do with more of like video games and movies and entertainment. So I think like the science fiction part of it is is not very difficult to understand, especially since we live in an age where there's so much virtual reality and that sort of like second screen experience and sort of that immersion into digital media is really prevalent. So I think that people sort of understand and can put themselves into the sort of era of the book really easily. Um, I really like read through this book quite fast. Um, I did, there were some people that I know that read it and didn't think the writing was that great. I myself didn't have any issue with it. I thought it was really well written. I thought that um, transportation, putting myself into that character, into that mindset, into that world was really easy. Um, and I sort of devoured this book really quickly. So I would definitely recommend this one for anyone who likes sort of dystopian or some science fiction sort of like <laughs> games in the 80s nostalgia. I feel like this is a really, really good um, book to get into. So just a quick note too. So that, so Ready Player One was published in 2011. Um, so that's sort of like the earliest one. Um, he since has a sequel called Armada that I've also seen sort of floating around the bookstore, but it has really 
mixed reviews and saying that it doesn't really hold up and it sort of has to sort of grasping at straws where their story probably isn't there. Um, I probably will read it. I do am interested in picking it up, but I don't sort of wanted to sit with this one and just sort of like bask in how awesome I felt after reading this one. So that's the first one. So, oh, and Steven Spielberg is making this into a movie, which is supposed to be coming out in 2018. So that will be really exciting. I will definitely be seeing the movie. I just feel like there's a lot of potential to make it very bad. So we'll see what he does with it. But I think that there's um, a good chance that it could be a great movie. Um, okay, so the second one is The Martian, which I'm sure everybody is like, at least, well, oh, that's, that's nice, <laughs> at least is familiar with because Matt Damon uh, played the main character of this book and it was nominated for an Oscar. So I want to talk about the book mostly because I felt like the book was one of the most beautiful pieces of science fiction that I've read. Um, in the last couple of years and that's because the science is its own character and he so the main character Mark Watney is an astronaut he's stranded on Mars you know this from reading the back so that's not a spoiler um, and he sort of has to figure out how to survive to get off the planet and there's all of these different levels of how he has to like MacGyver his way to like communicate with Earth and his former crew and able to survive um, by creating all of the things that he needs food water shelter air and to be able to live too so him as a character isn't super compelling it's what he's able to do and how he's able to create this sort of um you know he's sort of able to survive in his resourcefulness which i think is really compelling so the science itself is sort of a character which i really love because it's really through that resourceful, like never giving up, that that spirit that he's able to live and survive. And spoiler alert, he he lives. So if, if for anyone who's seen the movie, it's not a spoiler. But um, the part I I don't think it's really like gonna give away anything or take away anything by saying the ending, because the part of like the there's certain things that happen to him that create these like moments of like how is he gonna get. You know, how is he going to get through this? How is he going to survive this one? And that's part of what's really enjoyable is that that tension and seeing like how he's going to like use his brain and the challenges and the tools at hand to get from one place to the next. So you don't really see a ton of his backstory. So you don't really, you know, he doesn't really have that many relationships back home and all of that. And, you know, you only really see the sort of glimpse of him and his family um, through his log and sort of some minor things. But um, I think that he's not really supposed to be like you don't feel for him as a person you sort of feel for him and his situation his situation is so extraordinary that you're rooting for him anyways because any it could be any person who's trapped on mars and you're sort of there thinking like i would go you know insane or i would give up or i would just be like well fuck it like <laughs> i'm done but he doesn't do that and he's able to really overcome insurmountable odds and i think that's what's really compelling about it is that you know, if I saw someone who was like just there and like literally giving up or his like struggle of this and that and whatever, I think that it wouldn't be that compelling. But because he was able to like overcome that and to really say like, okay, there's got to be a situation he's going to fight every single minute to get there. And um, there's also like, you know, a lot of political stuff about, you know, on Earth and organizations come together and science to like do these missions together and all this stuff. Um, and the science itself, like, he does sort of have this sort of, like, um, narrative of, like, science overall or, like, geological happenings and things like that that sort of have this, like, um, omniscient voice. Um, so I think it's really interesting. I think, like, overall, in terms of a book that was, like, yay science, like, this is it, but it's still very, very readable and the science isn't you know, I have a degree in biology, but, you know, there's lots of things in here that I um, I have a vague understanding of, and it wasn't um, off-putting or too much or, like, boring or anything like that. So I feel like this is a really, really good, if anybody's really interested in science fiction at all, um, this is a really compelling read that I thought would be great for them to pick up. So I would definitely recommend if you have, if you have an interest in science um, and you really like some science fiction, I think this is a really good one to add to your TBR. 
Um, but yeah, let me know. If you've read this and you thought differently, tell me why um, in the comments below. Okay, and then the last one, okay, I don't have a hard copy of this one, I'm sorry. I actually listened to it on audiobook because it was almost 900 pages and I have about an hour and a half commute, um, you know, total during the day. So I do like to listen to audiobooks in the car. Um, okay, so last book is Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. It came out uh, last year, about a year ago, May 2015. And um, no one that I know personally that I talk to in real life at work or in my friends or even my friends who are readers have have an interest or desire to read this book. I have no idea why. It's just me and I decided that I was going to read it and I had an audible credit and I said, all right, seven eves, you and me, we're going to spend some time together. It took a couple of months to get through this book um, because it was so dense, even in the audiobook, that there were moments where I was like, I cannot listen to one more sentence of this book. But then I would come back into it and there would be a point where it would like really be interesting or really intriguing. So the premise of the book, I'm sorry, this is probably going to be the most spoiled of all the books, but um, the premise of the book is that something happens and the moon blows up and splits into pieces and it comes um, to be that um, there's only going to be two years left for the earth before all the pieces, like, you know, they become, they escalate and they come down and it's basically going to ruin the entire environment, burn up the whole atmosphere and all that stuff. So, um, there's basically like two years to live for everybody on earth and then they have to figure out how to like make humanity survive. So there's, they you know, put all, throw up all these people into space and there's all this stuff like how are we going to survive and so basically it's like a mad scramble to get everybody that needs to be up there and the infrastructure and all that sort of stuff into space and so most of the book deals with that. There's a character, um, his name is like Dubois Harris or Doc, Doc Dubois and uh, he's very clearly uh, modeled after Neil deGrasse Tyson so I feel like that was like very very easy for me to picture Neil deGrasse Tyson as like him in this book. Um, he's like the political like science figurehead who also gets chosen to go up into space and then you know so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of really interesting moments that he builds up with tension of you know emotional human elements of you know facing mortality and the apocalypse and you know putting that aside you know there's like certain like polit people there for political gain and personal gain but also in terms of like what is the future of humanity going to be like what is that going to look like um you know with only a fraction of people left and i feel like he builds up these beautiful tense moments of you know that are really emotional and powerful and then he sort of like moves into like really really boring science about like how the infrastructure of these like arclet capsules are made and like all of this stuff so it's sort of like the science is this weird diffuser of tension but not in a way that i feel like propels the story forward it's like so dense and so dry and it sort of like serves to ruin some of the things that he built up with like the human interaction and stuff like that. So that that's the stuff I found really compelling is not so much like the the equation of finding out that the earth is going to be destroyed, but like what are we going to do about it? What are the repercussions of that? And I feel like he sort of focuses on the part that I found less interesting than the parts that I found more interesting. So I feel like I sort of came in and out of um like being invested in which character. So there's a bunch, there's a couple of main characters that he centers around, some of them that are already on like the International Space Station, some of them that are on Earth, and like they're somewhat, their backstories and things like that, but um, there's a lot more, there's a lot of editing that I feel could have like cut out at least 150 pages that would have sharpened it up and made a focus more on the people than just like the science itself. and. Maybe that's sort of the purpose, was that the, like, science was going to save the day, not people. People were going to destroy it. I understand that, but, 
you know, there are no, there's no science without people. <laughs> so, well, I mean, there's like things that happen, but they don't mean anything without people to, they don't mean anything in reference to people without people there. Um, and so like there's these decision made and so you can see like the, this is where humanity is going to stem from, like this is the future of humanity. And then it kind of shifts into like 5,000 years later and then there's like a second half of the whole book about like where humanity is now and where civilization is now and sort of like the earth has just come out of this um, like it's just cooled off and like there's like less um, you know, asteroids in the air and stuff like that so like the you know it's finally like not burning on the surface and things like that um, and uh, so it's about like the first people to venture onto earth and it turns out that there's like other people that are there and people that had like dug holes and then people that were like elsewhere and so they have to sort of navigate this like um, relationship with these people that are sort of there inherent from like 5,000 years ago um, which is found really interesting and it sort of builds up again to this sort of tense moment um, where there's like the fate of humanity is going to be revealed and then I feel like it sort of ends on a like no words just like yeah okay well that's ha that happened and then it didn't really resolve in any way that I felt was deserved it to be resolved um, I was really interested and invested in the second half of the book. I thought that was like really interesting, but then it sort of builds up into this tense moment and then it's like nothing happens. So, <laughs> so like, okay. Uh, so I, I don't know exactly like where he's gonna go. I don't think that there's gonna be a sequel so much, but um, so I definitely have mixed thoughts about that book. But the thing is that it stayed with me. Um, so honestly, sometimes I feel like those are the books that are sort of like almost more important because they don't necessarily, you know, they're not just like, oh, this is a wonderful book or this is a terrible book, but a book where you have like such strong passions for and against certain parts of the book. So it definitely kept me thinking a lot about like the characters of the book and like the, what would happen if I was in the situation, like what would I be doing, uh, what would my thoughts be. And then just sort of like the future of humanity, like what that could look like if facing this sort of situation, things like that. So all of that combined, I feel like is a very interesting read. Um, let me know if you've read it. I've also <laughs> gone on Goodreads and a lot of people feel like this is the best science fiction book they've ever read and he's a master and all of that, which I do not disagree with. I think that he's got some really interesting books out there, but... Um, I don't know if I was reading it either in hardback or, or you know, hard copy or um, ebook that I would have been able to finish it. So I don't think I would have been able to get through some of the trudgery of the science to get to some of those beautiful moments that I did discover and that, that I was able to do a lot more passively through listening to an audiobook. So, let me know if you've read Seven Eves, if you were interested in reading Seven Eves, what you thought about it, and the great thing about not knowing anybody who's read that book is now I get to talk about it with all of you guys. So let me know in the comments down below if you've read it and if you were interested in reading it. Um, and also if you're interested in reading or if you have read either of these two books, you can't see this one because I'm not holding it right, but um, Martian or Ready Player One, if these are on your TBR, if you're interested in seeing Ready Player One movie, or if you've seen The Martian, what you thought about those two, uh, what you thought about that adaptation, um, what you thought about the book, and do you think that they should make Seven Eves into a movie? I don't know, I think it could be actually a really good movie um, if they definitely focused on the characters and the narrative more than some of the science stuff, but I think it would be a fabulous movie, probably a better fit for really Scott then, the Martian, but um, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what that's, what that's all about. In the meantime, I'm going to finish my cider and I'm going to go think about the next science fiction book that I'm going to read and tell me yours down below. Alright, cheers guys, until next time.